you. You have no idea how much mercy I have. Get his rest. The morals of men don't apply to gods. This is torture. This is science. There's moving in there. It's alive. God forgive us. Get out of there now! Kill me! Take me! Fire cleanses. I'm gonna make sure you burn for what you and your friends have done to me. Do my own! So we just saw the trailer. Looks pretty awesome. A little bit scary. Who doesn't like a good fright? My name is Jay LaRock, and we're going beyond the game trailer. Now, I don't know about you, but, you know, the idea of just waking up in a scary, you know, ship and, you know, next thing you know, you're all alone and <laughs> you don't know what's going on. Me, personally, I, I don't think I'm going to be going up in space, even with, you know, the discovery of Kepler. But I guess we'll we'll see how that would work out in the future. I don't know if I'm going to live long enough to see that. Uh, maybe we'll ask uh, Nicholas Bischoff about that. <laughs> Thanks for joining us on the show. Hey, how's it going? Uh, it's Chris Bischoff here, the creator of Spaces. Oh, Chris, sorry. And okay. um, my my brother that I've been talking to is is, is Nick. So uh, yeah, it's a very much a, a, a family created game. Awesome. So that's why it's the Brotherhood. Yes, yes. It was actually it was an idea. We were uh, starting a company uh, a long time ago. We had a whole selection of names to choose from, um, and we didn't go with the Brotherhood for the one. But it's always been in the back of my mind to sort of uh, create a company called the Brotherhood. So when it came to kind of putting everything together, it was just like the obvious choice for us to actually go with that. Awesome. And I see that in the background you have aliens. So was that one of the inspirations? Yep. Oh, definitely. I mean, um, you know, uh, watching sort of Ridley Scott's Alien. I mean, I was about, I must have been about eleven or twelve when I when I first saw it, um, which I think is actually the perfect age to be introduced to sci-fi horror. Not according to the uh, NPA rating boards, but definitely uh, according to kids of the eighties. Um, and it really it left such a, a massive impression on on me as a person and, and as an artist. Um, and I think sort of everything that I've done since then has kind of almost been around. Um, you know, alien and the entire idea of science fiction and science fiction horror. Um, I mean, it, Aliens had, has a, had a bigger influence on me than things like Star Wars and Star Trek. Um, alien is definitely sort of the, um, yeah, it's my kind of go-to movie when I'm feeling sad. It's my go-to movie when I'm feeling happy. Um, it really is, uh, I think it's probably one of the greatest movies ever made. Um, I sound like I'm trying to pimp Ridley Scott yet, but it really is a, such an incredible piece of art. Uh, and to be able to make a game that had something similar uh, around the same themes as, as Alien has always been sort of uh, like a, 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 a pipe dream of mine. And it's nice to see it finally coming to, to, uh, to, to fruition. So, of course, we're talking stasis. And, I mean, the, the, the game starts off as you awake from stasis. And, you know, can you just set us up with the, the general story of, of the game? Um, well, obviously, without going into too much, because it's an adventure game, so story right. and um, the discovery of it is, is really kind of like uh, you know the, the, the driving uh, point of it. But um, uh, essentially, you, you wake up, you've got no memory, but no idea where you are. Um, you play a character whose name is is, is John Marichek. Um and uh, in the first part of the game, not spoiling anything for you guys, in the first part of the game, you basically realise that um, you're obviously alone, and uh, your last memory is of having your family with you. Um, so the driving point of the game is really trying to find out what's happened to your family, trying to find out where they are, um, and then throughout that, working out the story of what's actually happened on this huge abandoned research facility um, that, that, that you found yourself on. And so it's very much a, a mystery, inspired by kind of like, but like the very really like um, the opening scene in, in Alien where they find the derelict spaceship and they're trying to figure out sort of what's going on. That's very much a driving force in the field for the entire game. So sort of taking that, those opening sequences and making an entire story out of that 
um, the, the emotion of, you know, what's going on um, and also really playing on the, the themes of family, um, which is something that obviously because I've been making the game with my brother, I mean, family is very, very important to me. So it was a case of really writing what we actually know about. Um, and uh, yeah, it, it's and it's also there's a, an entire sort of uh, backstory on the, the history of the ship that you get to figure out uh, and the world as you sort of move through the game. And you guys have, you know, that retro style with the point and the click, the puzzle solving. Um, was there like, retro games or that you that had an inspiration i mean you told us about you know like aliens and, and that kind of inspiration for that was there games that were inspired uh that you played maybe or that you uh you know that you uh yeah that you played back in the uh, day that yeah. was the inspiration for this uh, oh uh, definitely um you know i mean kind of growing up in the um you know i was born in in, in 83 um and sort of i i was playing games with the, uh, the hearts of the the golden age of adventure games. So when, when LucasArts started coming out with all of their things and, and Sierra. Um, so I mean, I grew up on Space Quest and, and King's Quest um, and games like uh, um, The Dig was a massive influence because it was a, a serious, hardcore science fiction take um, in an adventure game, which hadn't really been done um, before. And then of course, games like Sanitarium um, were a massive influence. And then even things like, um, like Diablo, taking the kind of the, the, the 2D isometric uh, uh, the 2D isometric uh, points of view, um, and uh, I mean the, the the graphics in those sorts of games, even like StarCraft, and it was such a massive influence to me as an artist. Um, and Fallout as well, uh, a huge, huge influence. Um, and actually, the, the music in Stasis is actually done by the same uh, composer who did the music in the original two Fallout games. Um, and of course, Planescape Torment and that sort of stuff. Uh, Mark Mark Morgan, and he also did Zork Nemesis as well. Um, which is amazing. It's also one of my sort of all-time favorite adventure games. Uh, so I mean, to to have like a team like that working on this stuff sort of is mind-blowing for me, um, and be able to take sort of those those influences of um, where, you know the, the, all the games that I played when I was young and really put them into stasis and make kind of my my ultimate love letter to those to those games. Also, love letter to the games that I grew up with as a as a child, as a teenager rather. <laughs> As far as like getting into being able to get horror out of a game, especially when you have like the you know top down uh, point and click, um, like how how did you go about um, trying to get it where you know you still had that suspense horror aspect where you know a lot of times nowadays people have to rely on like jump scares or things like that to really get that suspense. Yeah. Uh, you know, sound design um, is, a, is a massive part of it, um, actually creating the world through, through sound. Um, but I think that kind of, uh, we sort of did what we could with the isometric vantage point in using it to our advantage in making you feel sort of detached from the environment and really showing how, how small you are in this, in this big world. Um, but I, I wouldn't say stasis is necessarily sort of like jump scare, horror, in your face kind of thing. It's more about building up the tension and not quite knowing what's behind that door. Um, you know, doing jump scares is, is it, it actually is quite fun and there are a couple of them uh, here and there in, in spaces. Um, but it's definitely more about um, uh, horror and dread more than fear of having something about to kind of like jump at your speed while you actually jump back. And, this, and the same as far as like uh, dealing with uh, puzzles, it's, uh, I know that you know, especially back in the day with some of the co older computer games, like people uh, worried about, uh, you know, like the difficulty in puzzles where nowadays, like, they make it much easier to solve them. How would you say the puzzles yeah. in this game stack up to, you know, like the, the games, like it's even back in the day with Space Quest, you know, you may look at graphics back in the day, especially if you don't play them, and you may think, oh, those graphics look simple, the puzzles might be simple, but no, they might, they're much difficult, much more difficult than games today where the puzzles you know it looks like they're very graphic intensive but when you actually solve them it's difficult what would you say the difficulty levels are uh as far as the puzzles that, that you have to solve in this game well you know um i mean back, back then a lot of the the they had big obstification with the puzzles where, where essentially they um they made them very difficult so that they could sell more hint books um well, at least that's my sort of personal theory about that um, and I think that uh, uh, it, it's important to sort of have puzzles that are definitely grounded in the world. And once you sort of set up your rules for how the world actually works, 
Um, you know, it's in spaces we haven't gone kind of like completely out of the box with the cat moustache with uh, honey as the, the, the classic adventure, bad adventure game puzzles is always referenced. Um, and uh, it was really sort of trying to make certain that, that, that there are puzzles that made sense in the world, um, but also give you a bit of out of the box thinking, and, you know, taking an object and maybe not using that object in the way that it was originally meant to be used, but using it in a, a way that after you've solved the puzzle, you sort of look at it and go, oh, that was obvious, why didn't I think of that? Um, but if you mean puzzle design adventure games, it's not, it's not easy because you can make things that are very, very complicated, but that are very, very boring. Um, so it, it's kind of a, a constant balance of trying to make sure the game's exciting, making sure that you're actually driven in the pacing and the plot, um, but also that the puzzles make logical sense in the world. And I think that we've done a very good job with that. So, so far, the, the, the feedback from people um, has been very positive um, in relation to the puzzles and being able to actually solve them. Yeah. So it's it, again, it's it's a very very slippery slope to actually go on a very tight a tight track to actually walk on. But I think we've done a very good job. Um, but time will tell. Yeah, I mean, uh, definitely on a trailer and and on uh, Steam uh, Greenland, everything so far looks really great. I'm I'm really looking forward to checking out the game. Is supposed uh, looking to be released uh, on October thirty first. I mean, I'm sorry, uh, August thirty first. Awesome. So the game is Stasis and is, is looking to be released uh, on August 31st, which is a Monday. Uh, thanks, uh, Chris, for coming on and talking with us about the game. It's been an absolute pleasure. Um, and uh, yeah, if you guys, if you follow me on, on, on Twitter and on Facebook, there's always updates. Um, if anybody wants to drop me an email, they're more than welcome to because the, the contact information you can get a hold of me through Twitter. Um, yeah, and I'm happy to, to talk again. Yeah, you can go over to stasisgame.com, and you can also follow them at Twitter at stasisgame. So you guys, I'll make sure to put those links up on the website and also on YouTube so you can find that. But uh, for now, thanks for checking out the trailer. And this is Jay LaRock for Beyond the Trailer. And remember, our motto until next time, never stop gaming. <laughs>